Hi, and welcome to today's daily devotional. And today we're going to be looking at a passage in John 13. I'm not going to be reading the entire passage, but if you have your ability to have a Bible in front of you, then you can be looking at it. This is where Jesus washes his disciples' feet. And this is actually the third, this is before the Passover, and it's right before Jesus' crucifixion. And it's the third Passover that Jesus had during his ministry. So one of the things which we realize in this world is that we all have problems. We all have different types of problems. Um, you know, so for the ancient Jews, the problem was the Romans. And the Romans were the problem. If you got rid of the Romans, then the world would be better. And maybe two years ago, the problem was COVID. And COVID was the problem. If you got rid of COVID, then the world would be better. And then it was Ukraine. And then it was gun control. And then it was abortion or whatever the problem is then if you get rid of the problem, then we just think the world will be better because consciousness is more or less monofocal, good and bad. And so for the Jews, the problem was the Romans. And if you got rid of the Romans, the world would be better. And so there was this idea that the Messiah would come and he would lead an army and they would get rid of the Romans. And then Jerusalem would be the capital of the world and Rome would not be the capital of the world. And so one thing which we see here is we see the devil prompting Judas to do things. And before this, we see the devil, or at least Jesus calling Peter the devil and saying to Peter, get behind me, Satan. And it's an interesting thing because you can wonder, what was Jesus saying to Judas? And what was Judas's motivation in betraying Jesus? And we don't often consider this, but I was considering it a little bit in this context. And I was thinking maybe what Judas's motivation was, was to get Jesus in a corner because the Pharisee had been trying to kill Jesus for a while now. And Jesus keeps evading their attempts and just getting away. But maybe Judas thought, well, if I get Jesus into a corner where he can't back out, then he'll put on the Iron Man suit and he'll go ahead and do away with them. And then he'll go on to the Romans. And then off to Jerusalem we go. And then off to Rome we go. And we take over the world. And maybe that's what Judas thought. And Jesus, maybe Peter thought a similar thing when he told Jesus that you're not going to die. That's not what's going to happen, Jesus. You're not going to die. So this is an interesting passage because, as it says here in the beginning of the section, verse 4, So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. This is akin to Iron Man taking off his suit before battle. What are you doing, Jesus? You're washing your disciples' feet? Peter says, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash your feet, you have no part with me. Peter knows how the structure is supposed to go. Jesus is supposed to be up here. Peter's down here. Peter does what Jesus wants. But that's not how Jesus had it. We're looking for, at times, the great reset. We're looking for all things to be better. But in this passage, we see Jesus saying, I tell you the truth. No servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. This is a scalable example of how Jesus saves the world. By washing his disciples' feet. By becoming their servant. Not by hulking out and destroying the Romans and taking over the world. But by showing them the law against which there is no exception. The law of love. And this is what we can do in our daily lives. Instead of winning, instead of trying to get the best of the other person in our interactions or trying to be the best in the room or doing things to impress other people or even doing things to try to impress ourselves, maybe we could humble ourselves and act as Jesus did and wash, proverbially at least, the feet of those around us and not be so concerned with taking everything over. So, that's my what I had to say. So let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. I thank you that you came to this world as a servant, as someone who suffered for us. And I pray that we would be able to be more and more like that, more and more like how you are, more and more of a servant to one another and to you. In Jesus' name, amen.